Okay, what I'm going to do now is give you my interpretation of question number two from the 2018 AP Stats free response questions. Go ahead, pause the video. You can read the question if you haven't already. Uh, they've given you a confidence interval here, and they want you to solve for n, essentially. How many students? That's solving for n, and it is always the size of the sample. So if you remember, the formula for a confidence interval, we start with p hat. That's our estimate. We go out, we collect a sample, and then we add and subtract from it z star times the square root of pq over n, where q is the complement of p. In other words, whatever p is, you do 1 minus that, and that'll give you q. z star comes straight from here, so we can figure that out. We can figure out the middle of our interval because here's our interval right here. We just got to look at where's the middle of that. Remember what you do is you go out, you collect a sample, and then you add a little on this side, and we subtract a little, and that's what gives us our confidence interval. This distance that we add here is called the margin of error, and it's on both sides. So we add it and we subtract it. So this interval here represents this. That's what's going on. So I can tell by, you know, add these up, divide by two, I can find the middle of this, and I know that p hat is equal to 0 0.7, right? I then can find the distance from p hat, which was our estimate, to the end of the confidence interval. So in this case, the margin of error, let's write these down over here, p hat 0 0.7. The margin of error is the distance from 0.7 to the end of the interval. So that is 0 0.116. I can do that math in my head. All right, now, here's the formula. This part right here is the margin of error. All right, so we have p hat plus or minus that whole thing right there. So let's plug everything in and see. Ooh, you know what I forgot? I forgot my little hats over there because it's coming from a sample. So let's plug everything into that part of the formula. We know we want the margin of error that is going to equal uh, 0 0.116. So 0 0.116 has to equal this ugly formula. Z star times the square root of PQ over N. All right, let's plug in everything that we know. So 0 0.116 has to equal, now Z star, this is a 95% confidence interval. If you remember how we figured that out from class, think of a normal curve, you want the middle 95%. All right, so how many standard deviations is that? To figure that out in your calculator, you can do inverse norm, but you have to work all the way from the left, always. So we're gonna plug in uh, 0 0.975 with zero comma one. All right, so when you do that, you get 1.96. That should be familiar, because you've done a lot of these. So you're like, yeah, that looks right. I remember that. Uh, times the square root. P hat, in this case, is 0.7. That means that Q hat would be 0.3. And it's all over N. Now, we just need to solve for N. So this is algebra 1. Well, algebra 1, algebra 2. What I would do is I would divide both sides by 1.96 and then square both sides. That would give me this fraction right here, 0 0.116 divided by 1.96. That whole quantity squared is going to equal, uh, multiply those two, 0 0.21 over n. So divide, square, gets rid of the square root. That leaves me at this point. I then like to just cross multiply is one way to think about it, or you can switch these two. But n is going to have to be greater than 0.21 divided by this whole blob of mess. So 0.116 over 1.96 quantity squared. So in your calculator, let's see what that looks like. So here's how I put it in the calculator, and I get 59.95. So you always have to round that up. Even if it was 59.1, we would round that up. So n has to be greater than, uh, we'll say 60. 60 students. It's pretty close greater than or equal to. What are they asking here? How many students? So it's gonna be equal to. Sorry. Sometimes they ask the question, how many students do you need to make sure or guarantee that the margin of error is a certain certain size? In that case, we do use greater than or equal to. But here we just will say equal to, approximately equal to. 
All right, so that is part A, solving for n. Part B, given that the uh, method used was the, she hauled him in the office basically and, you know, kind of asked him right on the spot. And so how would that introduce some bias? And I would argue that if you're put in front of a teacher and they ask you a question, you're going to want to say the right answer, regardless of what truth is, right? You're going to want to say, in this case, you'd want to say, yeah, I recycle. Obviously, who doesn't recycle? Right, so I would answer this by saying, by asking the student in private, alone if they recycle, the teacher is creating an environment where the student may feel intimidated. The student would be more likely to say yes, even if the answer is no. This would give us an estimate that is higher than the population parameter. All right, so that answers part B. So on to part C. Go ahead and pause it if you need to read it. Uh, question one, what is the expected number of students from the sample of 300 who would be required to respond no? because the coin flip resulted in heads. I like to make a little tree diagram so my brain knows what's going on. So we have two choices, we have heads or tails, and there's a 50% chance of each. If they flip a heads, they're going to answer no, no matter what. And if they get a tails, then it comes down to, you know, they're gonna answer truthfully. It might be yes, it might be no. Okay, so the first question, part one says, what is the expected number from the sample? We know that it's going to be 50%, right? So it's 50% of 300, right? I mean, the total number is 300. So half of that should have to say no because of the heads. So 50% of 300 be expected to answer no because of the coin flip heads. That is about 150 students. Boom, easy. And then part two, the results of the sample showed that 213 out of 300 responded no. So that makes me ask some questions, you know, right off the bat. If 213 said no, I know that 150 of them uh, was due to flipping a heads. So let's take 150 out of both of these. Let's take away the 150. That means that 63 out of 150 said no, and they were being truthful. So that means if 63 out of 150 said no... 87 out of 150 must have said yes. That's if we take the 150 and we take away uh, the 63 no's, that leaves 87 yes. So 87 out of 150 said yes. That works out to approximately, let's get that calculator out of here. Let's divide that by 150 and we will get 58%, percent 058 So about 58% will say yes. There you go. Now, the next part of this question is looking at the solution guide for what you need to have on the paper to make sure you get maximum point. So the solution guide will give you uh, the answers first to make sure that you're doing it correctly. And then they tell you how to award points. And if you remember, each free response question is worth four points. So you can look through and it works through the work here. Sample size was 60, we got that. We talk about bias. And make sure, like small things, like are you stating that your estimate would be higher than what the parameter would be, in this case for part B? That is important. And they go through and they pretty much did it the way we did. The next page, if you go to this, you can Google the scoring guidelines. So here they're telling you exactly how to grade it. And as you know, each question, you either get it essentially correct, partially correct, or incorrect. And to get that essentially correct, I see a lot of students that do most of the things right. They end up with partially because they don't satisfy little tiny things to make sure you get essentially correct. You need to make sure you're communicating pretty much everything to the graders. All right, so in this specific question, essentially correct, you had to use standard error in the form of P hat. This is Q hat. We use Q hat um, all over N. So... We wrote that out, that's not a problem. We shows evidence that p hat equals 0.7 was correctly used, I think we're good there. Evidence that 0.116 was used as the margin of error in the calculation, and the z star, and it includes a single positive whole number. So, you know, I'll see students, their answer will be 59.9, and they won't include that last part, even though I know they know it, and that just automatically bumps them down to a partially correct. So. I encourage you to go through the solution guide. Go ahead, I will do a little shot of it right now so you can read it and make sure that you know, you're doing everything okay with question number two. Double check it, you should do that for every single one of yours.
Good luck.